So today's reviews, review topic is multiplication and division of decimal numbers. This is a lot to bite off in one day, but hopefully we can get it pretty much straightened out. Um, multiplication of decimal numbers is pretty straightforward as long as you're pretty solid on the standard algorithm. All you need to do is um, remember the rule and understand why it works the way it does. So the first thing to do with any standard algorithm uh, problem, rather any multiplication problem if you want to solve it by standard algorithm, is to rearrange it from a horizontal format into a vertical format. Now, unlike the standard algorithm for addition, uh, you, you do not, in fact, probably shouldn't line up the decimal points. Uh, you, you want to instead uh, make all of the numbers flush against an imaginary right-hand line. Um, and it's helpful to keep them in neat columns. Um, that way, uh, you'll just have an easier time keeping track of your work. So, to solve this problem, you're, gonna, you're going to take uh, each digit in the second factor and multiply them by the each digit in the uh, first factor. And uh, with multiplication, you can put them in either order because of the uh, commutative property. And you should just arrange them however it's going to be easiest for you to solve. Um, it's a little beyond the scope of this video to explain why the standard algorithm works. Um, but think back to the area model, and perhaps in another video I can explain why that works the way it does. Um, so to step through this one, uh, we, we first take this digit here, that 8. Now, that's hundredths, but we're going to treat it as if it were ones. We're going to pretend for a moment that those decimal points aren't there, and then we'll deal with them later. Um, so let's step through this and find some partial products. So 8 times 3 is 24. So, place the ones digit there and carry the tens up to the top. And eight times zero is zero. But I add the two back in um, because, again, assuming those decimal points weren't there, that would be the tens place. And uh, we we have to add on the tens from the first part of the product. So uh, that comes two. And then 8 times 8 is 64. There's nothing carried over in that one. So that's the first partial product. Um, for the second partial product, we're multiplying with that 5. And the first thing we need to do is mark that we've moved up a place value by adding a 0. Um, then 5 times 3 is 15. I, oops, I don't do that. I carry the 1 here. Uh, it can be helpful to cross those out, and then you won't make mistakes like the one I almost made. Um, 5 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1. 5 times 8 is 40. Um, I don't need to do anything with that 0 and 0 0.58, because 0 times anything is 0, and that would just be a whole empty line of zeros. It's pointless to go through. Um, so then I take my two partial products and I add them together. Uh, 4 plus 0 is 4, 2 plus 5 is 7, 4 plus 1 is 5, 6 plus 0 is 6, and 4 plus nothing is 4. So, uh, if there had been any carrying in there, I would follow all the same rules as for any addition problem. It's just ordinary addition, uh, taking the two partial products. Now, the decimal points. I am not done. 80.3 times 0 0.58 cannot be 46,574. If you think about it, 80.3 is just about 80, and 0 0.58 is less than 1. So that number, the product is actually going to be smaller than 80. Um, 46,574 is way more than a reasonable answer would be. So what's wrong here? Well, I haven't dealt with those decimal points. Um, I pretended up here that those decimal points weren't there. I'm allowed to do that because of some of the things that we looked at with fractions. And it's like I multiplied that first product by 10 and this one by 100. 
to make them whole numbers. Um, so we that product, 46,574, is the product of 803 and 58. Um, so I multiplied by 10 and by 100, so that's really multiplying by 1,000. So I now need to divide by 1,000. So I'm moving in a decimal point to there, three places. Um, now, the rule is pretty straightforward. So first of all, that, that product now looks reasonable, 46.574. Um, that's a little more than half of 80, and uh, 0.58 is a little more than one half, so this is a reasonable answer. Uh, I feel pretty confident with it. I could always check it with division or something, but I, I feel pretty, pretty strong with this answer. Now, the rule. Um, if you don't want to go through all the thinking about uh, multiplying by fractions equal to 1 that let me do this trick, the, the thing that you can remember is that for every number that is in a decimal place value in the factors, so we have 1, 2, 3 numbers in decimal place values, we need to have 3 numbers in our product uh, in decimal place values. Um, so if it had been 80.3 times 58, not times 0 0.58, there would only be one number in a place value, and we would have, in a decimal place value, and we'd have only one down below. But you need to look at both factors, figure out how many uh, decimal shifts you made in the multiplication, and reverse it down below. All right, our second topic is division with decimal numbers. Um, th this is computationally... Uh, probably the most difficult algorithm. And there's a lot of steps. It's easy to get confused. You need to have solid multiplication facts. You need to be solid with subtraction. It is tricky to do, and adding decimals on top of long division um, just adds another area where confusions can happen. Uh, so this is an important one to practice. I didn't assign too many of them because they take a long time, but you got to be sure that you do practice this if you're not solid with it. Um, these problems, I'll also note, are very difficult. These are probably the hardest, uh, about the hardest division problems that you would be likely to encounter on the fifth grade exam. Um, I don't think you'll see any that are harder than these. Um, and they're harder because they involve decimals and because they involve double-digit divisors, uh, two-digit divisors, rather. So, division. First of all, to set up the long division algorithm, uh, the first thing you want to do is rearrange it uh, like so. Now, one of the first places where people can become confused is that it looks like you're changing the order when you set up long division. Um, some people use some different techniques for setting up. This is the one I am most comfortable with. Um, I, I do not like the line down the side, but you're welcome to use it if that works for you. Uh, for me, I don't like running out of room... Uh, with my decimal numbers, because we might have decimal numbers in our whole, like we do now. All right, so the first thing we need to do is that we we don't really know how to do long division with a decimal in the divisor without changing it. Now, for the same reasons that we can um, do some funny things with decimals in multiplication, we can do the same with division, and it works even better. Um, as you'll remember that we, we proved that, for example, uh, 5.3 divided by 0.6 is the same as 53 divided by 6. Um, so all we need to do here is we're going to shift one place value in both the divisor and the whole. Um, if you needed to... If you had two, um, if you had hundredths instead of just tenths, you wouldn't want to do two. You, you you need to move the decimal point in the divisor as many times as you need to to get rid of the decimals. Um, but you have to make sure that in the whole you make the same number of shifts. So we now are solving instead of 143.66 divided by 2.2, we're solving 1,436.6 divided by 22. In fact, I'm going to mark my new decimal points in green there, just to make it clear what I did. Um, now, here is the, a critical step. So we've made our shift so that we no longer have a decimal in the divisor. We now must mark where the 
decimal point will be in our quotient. Um, if we are not careful with that, we could easily end up with a place value error here. So 22. Now, here is the other thing that makes this problem hard. We have a two-digit divisor, and it does not fit neatly into either this first digit or these first two digits. We have to go to the first three, so we have to think back to dealing with double-digit divisors. Um, 22 into 143. Well, a couple things stand out to me. This This is a... Uh, an area will be well served by mental math and by your knowledge of your basic facts. Um, it's a good moment to do some estimating. Um, it certainly can't be 10 times that it goes in. Um, that then be 220. So it's and it's it's not even very close. I don't think nine. Um, I'm thinking somewhere around six or seven, and I say that because six times. 20 would be 120, and 7 times 20 would be 140. Now it's 22, so and it's only into 143, so I think 6 is my best bet. Um, in fact, 6 times 22, and you can check me with side math if you like, is 132. And how I did that is 6 times 20 is 120, 6 times 2 is 12, so 120 and 12 is 132. And I'm going to subtract that partial quotient. Um, 143 minus 132, well, there's 1, 1, and 0, so it's 11. Um, now, for each next calculation, make sure that you bring down the number in the next place value. 22 doesn't go into 11, but I'm not putting 0 in the next place because I haven't brought down the 6 yet. Um, so how many times does 22 go into 116? Well, I know it's going to be less than 6, because 6 was 132. Um, 122 less than 132 would be 110, so that sounds good. So 5 times, 5 times 22 uh, is 110, at least 5 times 20 is 100, and 5 times 2 is 10. And I'm left with 6 there. Um... And then I bring down that next 6, so that's 66. You'll notice that I am now moving beyond the 1's place. I'm moving into the decimal numbers. Uh, 60, uh, 22 goes into 66 an even 3 times. Because 3 times 22 is 66, and that leaves me with 0. I have no remainder. Um, so that's how you solve that pr problem. But, but let's take a look at a problem where uh, we have to move beyond the numbers that are given, where we do have a remainder at that point. Actually, quickly before we do that, um, a good idea with any division problem is to check it using the standard algorithm of multiplication. Um, that would be 65.3 times 2.2. Um, should give us 143.66. That is a little bit beyond the scope of this video since I already did one uh, standard algorithm demonstration. I'm not going to do another right now, but I, I, I'd go ahead and check it and check your own work. Um, I think that should work out pretty much right. This problem has some pretty reasonable numbers, 7.5 divided by 4, um, but it's going to illustrate an important principle. Um, so, I, this looks like a very straightforward uh, division problem. Uh, there's no shifting that's necessary. Um, that'd be easy to do if it was necessary, but fortunately here we don't have to. Um, seven, uh, 4 goes into 7 one time. And when we subtract, we're up to 3. Bring down the 5, we have 35. Um, now here is where the wrinkle appears. Um, I, I can tell that this will be uh, 8 because the if it was 9, 9 times 4 is 36, so I knew it had to be 1 less, so that's 32. And that leaves me 3. Um, and in 5th grade, we don't leave remainders like that unless we have some particular reason to. Now, one thing I want you to notice is I have left off something here. What is it? Well, I hope you noticed that I did not 
include the decimal point. Um, that is an easy mistake to make, um, and I, I want you to be really, really careful about it. Um, if it, my advice is always before you even start calculating is to put in the decimal point where it'll be. If you can keep things aligned vertically well while you're doing long division, it'll really help you out. And then your decimal point is already placed where it's supposed to be. Um, if you don't, that's okay. You can just go back later and add it in, but make sure that you do. Um, you, you can't make place value errors like that. All right, so now what do we do? Here's the question. Um, we still have the remainder. How are we going to find a decimal answer? Um, because we don't want to find a fraction here, because then we would have 1.8 and 3 fourths. But 3 fourths of what? And it, it, it would be 3 fourths of a tenth. That's not really a, a helpful answer. So when we're dealing with decimals, we want to stick with decimals and um, continue in this vein. So what do we do? We know that 7.5 is the same number as 7.50. Um, that gives us another number to bring down. And you can do this as many times as you need to. Uh, 4 goes now goes into 30 um, 7 times. That gives me 28. Remainder 2. Um, I need to add another 0. Um, and that is fine. So I have 20. And that 4 goes in 5 times. And I um, that gives me... 20, and remainder 0, I'm done. Um, pretty easy, but the thing with long division is that it gets complicated when we start combining all of these ideas. Um, the one other thing to be on the watch for is moments where it goes in 0 times. Uh, let me see if I can give you a quick illustration of that. So here we have 4.305 4 divided by 2.1. Uh, so we need to use that first idea of shifting the decimal point. Um, I'm going to shift it in both the hole and the divisor. And now I'm, I'm set up to succeed. I have 43.05 divided by 21. Uh, this is a problem I know how to deal with. Um, 20 going goes into 4 no, no times, but it goes into 43 um, two times, and that product is 42, left with 1. Now here is the situation I was talking about. I have now 10. Uh, 21 doesn't go into 10. So what do I do? This is another area where mistakes are common. So I'm going to pause and think this through. Well, it goes into 0 times. and Now this doesn't mean I just move on. Um, I'm actually going to mark zero for that place value. And um, some people like to skip steps here, but I, I, I'm not a step sk skipper by nature. So zero times 21 is zero. Left with 10 still. Bring down the 5 of 105. 21 goes into 105 five times. 5 times 21. Well, 5 times 20 is 100 times another Five, uh, add another 5 for the 1, and that's 105. And the remainder. Uh, I would use that last procedure of adding zeros if I needed to, but I don't happen to in this case. Uh, so I hope these examples are helpful illustrations of the kinds of problems you may need to face uh, when it comes to long division. The, the algorithm isn't complicated well, the algorithm is, is complicated, but the, the math is not complicated. It's, it's that the algorithm itself is complicated, and um, keeping track of all the different rules and steps and what to do in this circumstance or another um, can be hard. And the main thing, as always, is to make sure that you are thinking while you solve math. Um, long division is a place where errors are very frequent, um, even for those who have it well mastered. So really just be aware, be careful, make sure you think through each step as you do it. Um, it's important to be quick, but it's more important to be accurate. Um, I hope that helps, and I wish you the best of luck with your practice. Um, let me know if you have questions.